hey, do you know what I really like? Keep it clean, people. Is that when you're doing a project and all you need is one stick of old wood that you've found on the side of the road, like this plank of old pallet wood, cost you nothing and a bit of cash in your pocket. And by cash in your pocket, I mean five bucks max. There she goes. <laughs> Rolling in the cash, baby. <laughs> I better get that. G'day folks, Uncle Knackers here and welcome to DIY for Knuckleheads. Now buckle up and strap yourself in because today I'm going to show you, using limited tools, how to easily build four to five really cool projects using only one plank of reclaimed wood and a measly five bucks. Let's do this. Oh yeah, if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell. Class dismissed. You're a legend. Let's go. Okay, first cab off the rank, project numero uno. And I'll just be using this piece of old veranda post offcut that I managed to salvage after I built my house a couple of years ago. Told you I'd use it one day. And by the way, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link to it up there somewhere. So make sure you check that one out. Oh yeah, also I will be running a competition throughout this video where you can win one of these magnificent projects. So make sure you watch right through to the end where you'll pick up vital clues that you'll need to know to answer a couple of simple questions. Alrighty, let's get this show on the road. The first thing we need to do is to cut a strip out of this old block, which will be 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters, which is two inches by two inches. And to do that, I'm just using my trusty old Makita circular saw, which I've set the saw guide, this thing here, 50 millimeters away from the blade. Oh yeah, and don't panic folks, it's not plugged in yet, so I can't chop off my fingers. And also remember, whenever you're using power tools, to use your eye and ear protection. Alrighty, let's do this. So that's our strip all cut. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? And the next thing we need to do is to drill a hole through either end that will accommodate a rope. And the distance back that I've come for that hole is half the distance of whatever you've cut your strip at. Ours was 50 by 50 or two inches by two inches. So I've come back in 25 by 25 or one inch by one inch. And make sure when you drill that you drill from both sides. Because if you don't, you drill through, once you burst through the other side, that edge will splinter, and you don't want that. Alrighty, let's get our drill out and start drilling. With those two holes now drilled, I should let you know that the total length of this is 350 millimeters, which is a bee's left ear under 14 inches. They don't tell you that in the woodworking manuals, do they? Good to know. And the next thing we need to do is with the holes on top, we need to cut a 45 degree angle from that long point and up, and from that long point and up. You got that? Let's do it. Almost there folks, all we need to do now is to drill a hole through the top of this to accommodate a test tube shot glass which I bought from a party supply place. Drill a hole the same diameter or slightly larger than the test tube, slide the test tube down through the hole and the flare on the top there will prevent it from going all the way through. Thank you. 
Well, that turned out pretty good. All you have to do is to place a test tube in the hole, just like that. That flare stops it coming all the way through. Just get a rope, tie it on either end, and Bob's your uncle. Too easy. Let's finish it off. Now before we attach the ropes on either end, I might just give it a quick hit with a clear satin varnish. I'm just using an El Cheapo brush and I had this varnish just lying around the shed. So give it a quick hit. Let's see how it turns out. It's looking okay so far. With that varnish still wet, I think I'll place it on one of these hooks and hang it here and wait for it to dry. And while that's drying, let's have a crack at project number two. Let's do it. Now for this project, I'm just using this old sheet of scrap ply that I found lying around the shed. And what we're going to make is this very simple device so that you can watch your mobile phone in the upright position without it falling over. Let's do it. So all we need for this project is to measure up roughly 140 millimeters, which is about, I don't know, five and a half inches, something like that. And then come in two inches or 50 millimeters and just mark out that rectangle. Now, check out my fancy square. Um, for some reason I can't locate my square, so I'm just going to use whatever I can find. This will do the trick. Mark this out. Just like that. So we've got ourselves a nice little rectangle. And then just grab your phone and use that just to round off the corners. just like that. So from here, now grab your tape measure and come down 35 millimeters, which is just under one and a half inches. Put a mark there and then come in 14 millimeters here, right there. And that is a bit here under one and a half inches. Now put a little cross on him. That's our spot. Now what we need to do is drill a one eighth hole through that cross. Now for the second hole, I'm just using this larger 12 millimeter bit, which is, I don't know, probably a fly's fart under half an inch. And we're going to use that first hole or the initial hole as our guide will drill half the way through, turn the board over and drill from the other side. And the reason for that is that ply is fairly fragile. And if we drilled all the way through in one hit, it would splinter out the other side and you don't want that. Okay, let's go. Okay, we'll turn him over. And we'll just finish him off on this board. Done. Okay, next step. Now all we need to do is to run a line from the side of the hole to the outside edge of our new phone holder. I've got my fancy square yet again. I really miss not having a square. Anyway, sometimes you just have to improvise. Simple as that. Okay, run those lines out. And then we can get our jigsaw, cut along those lines, and we'll have a nice little slot for our phone. Beautiful. Now, if you don't have a jigsaw on hand, you can cut this 
with a normal everyday hand saw. But I do have a jigsaw, so away we go. And there we have it. Beautiful. We can now cut this rectangle out. And then we can just round off these corners with our jigsaw. And once again, if you don't have a jigsaw, you can use an electric sander. And if you haven't got one of those, even a hand sand would do the trick. Beautiful. So that's the phone holder thingy all cut out. Now all we need to do is to give it a good sand and then what I might do is apply my DIY for Knuckleheads logo to the face of that to see how that turns out. Could be good. Give it a crack anyway. Now all I'm doing here is transferring this reverse image of my logo onto the phone holder. Now, if you want to find out how I do this, the whole method, I'll leave a link to it below in the description box. Anyway, wish me luck. Let's see how it goes. Oh, a bit shaky. A bit shaky. Down it goes. And now we just need to rub that image. Hopefully it works onto the phone holder. It's really important not to move the paper because that'll smudge the image. So I'm just really cautious. I've never applied a transfer to ply before so I'm not quite sure how well it's going to take. Okay, let's take it off and have a look. Oh, it's a bit faint. But it's not too bad, we'll do the trick. Alrighty, bit of a coat of varnish and uh, we're almost done. Okay, just give it a quick coat with that varnish, which makes the logo stand out a little more. Not much, but a little more. I think maybe our printer may have been a bit light on ink. I'm not sure, but anyway, it's done. That's the main thing. The ply looks really good painted up. Love it. And while this dries, Let's go back to project one and finish that one off. Cool. Love it. Okay, this is now all dry and looking pretty spiffy. Now all I want to do is grab some rope, which I've got here, and run it through the holes. One through there. One through there. We'll tie this off. And then we're good to go. That's about the right length for what I want. Beautiful. Let's cut those loose ends off. And just lightly burn these ends to stop the rope from fraying. There we go. Okay, let's hang up on the wall. Okay, let's get this up on the wall. Now, the workshop probably isn't the best place for this, but you'll get the idea. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, give me one sec. Go get yourself that test tube fill it full of water and place in a few plants. And judging by that mangy old lot, flower arranging isn't my chosen field of expertise. Okay, place the tube into the hole and there you have it. I reckon that looks pretty good. It'd make a great present and I think your mum, your wife or your girlfriend would absolutely love it. There you have it, project one, Done. Tick. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. How much did it cost? The timber or the wood? Zero. Test tube, 50 cents. The rope, 50 cents. And for that skerrick of varnish, I'd say about 50 cents. 
So for $1.50, you've got yourself a pretty cool item. Good stuff. And to finish off the phone holder, I'm just going to stick some of this sticky backed felt to the inside of that checkout there so it doesn't scratch your phone. So all you need to do now is to place your phone in the phone holder and you can watch your favorite YouTuber in comfort. Hey, did you hear the one about the Who's that handsome devil? So that's it folks, a couple of really easy projects out of scrap wood that anybody can do and costs very little money. Now I know at the start of the video I said I was going to do four or five projects, but I simply ran out of time. But if you'd like to see more simple scrap wood projects, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll see what I can do. Now, competition time. If you'd like to win this phone holder, the very one that I made for the video, I'm going to select the first 20 correct answers to the next two questions that'll go in the drawer to win this little ripper. Alrighty, question number one. Hmm, let's see. In reference to a bee's anatomy, apart from the obvious, what unit of measurement do I use? And secondly, what was the total cost of that, um, you know, the plant holder th thing with the test tube and the, and the plants in it? Thingy. Okay, good luck for the competition. And as per usual, a big thumbs up for the video is always greatly appreciated. And if you want to see more pallet woody type projects, please click on my playlist, which is either there or over there. Make sure you check those out. Alrighty, after all that, I think I'm due for a cup of tea. So till next time, be safe, and I'm out of here. Cheers.